So today I'm going to be doing a video on my pond behind me. Um, I do need to do an update on this, but there's still a few more things I need to get done. That you can see I've started putting plants and stuff in there, and um, there's a few more fish in there and things like that. So I will do an update on this at some point. But I just want to show you something that I'm, I'm trying just for the filtration side of it. Um, so I do want to get live plants in here. Um, as you can see, I have got them in there. Um, I'm going to be building some custom plant pots for them. Um, and hopefully they start sprouting. These ones, they looked a bit rough. They're in my old tank and I've taken them out and put them in here just to hopefully sort of revitalize them just because they get a bit more light in here. So um, yeah, I'll be doing my own custom plant pots for them and they'll basically be hanging. They sort of go all the way around. They'll be coming around to this side. So all three sides are going to be covered. Um, yeah, I'll do that in a future video once these guys start growing a bit more. Um, but I'm going to focus on a plant today that's going to hopefully help uh, with the filtration side of this. So this is a plant I'm going to be using. So this is called a, a pothos plant. Um, I'm not big on plants, I'm not great with names, um, but I just know it's a, a pothos um, or a type of pothos. I've gone for one that's like a, you get a couple of different types. The one I've gone for is like a, a marbly sort of color. I, I don't know which one it is, I, I could not tell you. Um, but apparently these are really good for absorbing all the um, all the unwanted levels that you've got in your pond or your fish tanks and things like that. Um, it can help lower the, the levels. So that's why I'm sort of giving this a go. Now at the minute, I haven't got the sump set up perfectly. Um, I've got some, some work going on out in my, my area where I have my sump kept. So I will be doing another video on that just to update you on the sump and, and how I run my filtration. Um, but yeah, I want to start giving this a go because I think every little helps. Every little percentage you can add is, is better than not having it, if that makes sense. Um, so I bought this little plant, it cost me about £6.50. I got it off of uh, Amazon actually. Um, took a while to get here, it took nearly two weeks to get in. I did think it was going to be dead by the time it got here, but uh, it's, it's, it pretty much looked perfect when it arrived. Um, and it has started sprouting some new leaves and things like that. So we've got a new little leaf down here and um, we've got this little one under here. This is sprouted up, this is all brand new. Um, and I've just been keeping it in a, a pot with some soil for now just to try and get it going. And it looks like it's doing really well. So today uh, I'm gonna sort of take it out of the plant pot, um, take all the dirt out, modify the pot slightly, and I'm actually gonna get this into the water. So. From the research I've done, um, the way you sort of put these in water and, and get it to sort of grow and stuff like that is you, you only put the roots in the water and you keep the main part of the plant out. Um, so all I'm going to do with that is I'm going to get some filter floss, I'm going to stuff it inside the plant pot, I'm going to cut the bottom of the plant pot off just so the roots can dangle through. The, the floss should hold the main plant in place. Um, and then I'm just going to hold this in place with like some string or something like that. Um, and yeah, have those those roots in the actual water and just to see whether it boosts the growth. So I've had this plant a couple of weeks now, probably about three weeks actually, um, and it has grown, um, but it's not grown that quick. So I'm, I'm interested to see how much it actually sprouts once I get in the pond. I should have taken some pictures of it when I first got it, but it, it didn't dawn on me at the time, but I'm gonna take some pictures now. Um, I've got this video as well for reference so I can see how much it's actually grown. Uh, so yeah, we'll get in the pond and then see how quickly it actually sprouts up. So I'll quickly show you how I'm gonna get all this ready and, and what I'm gonna do with the actual plant itself. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna drain the water out of the plant. Just cause it's bad enough having all the wet soil everywhere. I don't want it leaking everywhere out of the bag. Um, I've been giving this plenty of water as well. I've been filling the, um, the little bowl right up just to make sure it's got a load of water basically. Cause it gets quite hot in my snake room. It sort of stays around 82 to 84 degrees all year round. So. Um, yeah, it, it does consume quite a lot of water, it does dry from up, the humidity out here isn't great either, so even when I'm dealing with the snakes, um, I do have to spray the snakes down quite a bit, uh, and I've been having some issues with it. I've been having some issues with my substrate actually going bad, actually, I'm like getting some mould growing in some of the tubs, um, so I normally use uh, coconut husk, and I'm thinking of going over to the cell for everything now, um, I know it's a lot more messy, and I mean I get coconut everywhere at the best of times, but yeah, apparently Lignocell doesn't have that issue, so I am thinking of switching over to Lignocell, so I'll be getting myself some of that soon, and um, yeah, trying that out. So what I want to do is I'm going to dump this out. Now I want to be careful that I don't destroy any of the roots. I'll have to give that a, a rinse. I should put gloves on fish, really. But yeah, I'm just going to be careful. I'm going to slowly get all the soil out, and I'll actually give this plant a bit of a, um, a, bit of a rinse as well. 
just because I want to try and get as much of the soil off as possible. I don't want that going in the pond. But yeah, you can see all the roots, they're starting to sort of show themselves. And once I give this a... Actually, I think this might be two separate plants. So I have sort of read that you can um, propagate, is that the word? I think it's the word. You, you can basically make multiple plants from one. Um, and it's all to do with like these sort of nodules. Oh, I'm not even showing you. It's all to do with like these sort of nodules right here. And apparently if you cut right below that, these then turn into roots which go down and then lets the plant grow on. So you can kind of see here where they've, they've snipped the stem off basically. And then the roots are starting to come out of those nodules on the side. So that's not too bad actually. That's quite good to know so that when I do actually set these up properly in the sump, um, I can actually spread them out, which is quite quite good. Uh, so I'm wondering if this is two separate plants as well. There's quite a quite a mat of roots here. I think this again could be two separate plants. I feel like they've sort of grown into one. So I'm just going to try and it, yeah, they've grown into one. All the roots are sort of matted together. So again, yeah, you can see two separate plants there. Um, and it's good to know that it, it does grow quite easily so that I can actually propagate this and maybe even move this into other places, other tanks and things like that. I did see if these would go into salt water, but apparently they don't. So um, you can see here, there's like a new little little shoot coming off just there. So that's, that's quite cool. But um, yeah, that's not too bad. So I'm just gonna get all the mud off of these. I'm probably gonna give them a quick rinse. Then once I've done that, I'll show you what I'm going to do with securing them in the plant pot. So I've just got a bowl of water here, I'm just going to rinse them off. Uh, this bowl is actually for another project coming up. Um, I want a way to clean my snake bowls a little bit easier, because um, I have to go normally battles and forwards to the sink, and I, I can't bother, it just takes so much time getting the bowls, going over to the sink, scrubbing them. So I want something that I can actually use at this workstation for cleaning bowls. Um, I don't want to have to worry about having tubs of water, cleaning I'm in the tub and then chucking that water out and getting new water. So I've got like a, a sprayer that I've bought. Um, it's like the ones they use in pubs to clean glasses and stuff. You literally just push the bowl onto, uh, yeah, bowl onto it and it sprays the inside. Um, it's just something that's a little bit quick and easier. So I can have my cleaning station all in one spot. So I'll have the tub, I'll have my bin, I'll have my substrate. And then over to the side, just over to this area, I'll have this little bit for cleaning my bowl. So that's an upcoming video. Um, so make sure you stick around and watch that if you're interested in that. But yeah, all I'm going to do with these is I'm going to chuck them in this water and hopefully that's just going to get all the mud off basically. I'm, I'm not too worried about getting all the mud off. Um, if some of it goes in the pond, it goes into the pond. I, I don't really care to be honest. Um, I'll just try and get as much off as I can just to make it a little bit cleaner. Yeah, I'm trying to be careful with these roots. I don't want to mess these plants around too much. I don't want to damage the roots. But yeah, basically all I'm going to be doing is putting that bottom part of the... I'm not even showing you. I'm going to be putting that bottom part, all of this is going to go into the water and then the rest of it is going to stay out of the water. So, that's one clean. And they do actually grow quite a lot of roots from what I've seen. Um, I've seen people with fish tanks and they've got a huge network of roots that have gone all the way down into the actual tank and stuff. Um, and I will be putting these in like Again, it's going to be a future video, it's not going to be for a while until my garage is done. Um, but basically they're going to have like a sort of backy shower, if you like. It's like a sort of little river, so I'm going to be using some, some guttering basically that you'd normally use on your house. Um, and I'm going to have a little pump that's going to pump the water up and through. And it's going to be like a continuous flow of water, so they're not going to be sat in stagnant water. They're going to have fresh water at all times, um, and I might even chuck some ceramic media in it as well, just as that little bit of extra beneficial bacteria and then it will just give the roots something to grow around as well. So now I've done that, I'm going to give this pot a quick clean, try and get all the dirt out of this as best I can and I'm just going to cut the bottom off of the pot and that's 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 it basically, it's not, not that difficult. I'm hoping the fish don't eat the roots, I've, the plants I put in there it doesn't look like the fish are eating the roots so that's quite, quite a positive sign. Um, but yeah, to us, I think they'll be fine. I do plan on putting stingrays in this pond. Um, a lot of people have said don't put stingrays in with plants because they will just destroy the plants. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to go through. I'm going to start off with a very, very small stingray anyway. Um, a nice small little baby one. Just so it's sort of... I want to watch it grow, basically. But yeah, it's just so that I can... Uh, 
hopefully train it to <laughs> destroy the plants. So now that's night well, it's, it's pretty clean. Um, I'm gonna cut it off. There is a line around there. I'm probably just gonna follow that line on the actual pot, um, use that as a guide. And yeah, I'll get some filter floss and we'll stuff it all in. So I've just got some old filter floss out of my filter. Um, I'd rather use stuff that's already been used, just I don't know if it's gonna benefit the plant or not, but um, yeah, I'd rather just use something that I've already got, cycled and things like that. So, I guess all I'm gonna do really is I wanna try and keep these plants separate. I don't want all the roots sort of entangling themselves and growing into each other, just cause it would be a bit of a nightmare to, to separate them all. But I'm just gonna wrap it up. I'm trying to keep the, the plant in line with the top of the filter floss, just so I know where to stuff it into the plant pot. Um, so I'm gonna fold it over once onto that piece. Get the next piece, try and get the roots in line. And then I'm not too worried about the roots poking down out of the filter floss either, to be honest, that doesn't really bother me that much. Um, I'm gonna fold that over to there. And then just to do the same with the last one, basically, chuck that plant again on top, get them roots where I think they should be. And then fold it over. Being careful I don't break any of the stems. Keep that stem out, and as I roll it up, you can see I've got a nice big wodge there, so that should squish into the plant pot quite nicely. Um, so this filter floss will actually absorb the water as well, so that will keep, if I don't put them fully in the water, it should keep all the roots fairly wet. Um, you can see some of the roots are poking out the bottom there. Um, some of these plants I might tie a bit of string to just to help support them but they are sort of vine hanging plant I think so they they should be able to support their own weight so I'm going to stuff this into the plant pot and I made sure I had enough of the um, filter floss to actually wedge in there I'm just trying to make sure all the roots are sort of hanging down they're not stuck on the side and I'm just going to push this down wedge it in place now I know the top of the filter floss is where the roots sort of start, so I'm gonna push this quite far down, sort of up to this line here, because I know I can, if I hang this into the water up to here, I know the roots are pretty much completely in the water. As long as I can see water over the top of that as well, again, I know they're pretty much spot on. That'll give that plant a bit of support, and again, you can see the roots hanging out the bottom. So over there on that back bit, you can actually, oh, dropped all the food on the floor. Over there you can see there's like three screws in place. So that's what's actually holding these plants up. So I've just got, again, attached a fishing line. That's probably how I'm gonna fix them in place. Um, I did think about putting magnets in there at one point. And then I thought about building like a, a PVC structure around the whole side, put the plants on. Um, but to be honest, I want, I want as much room in here as possible, so. Uh, the best way I could have thought about it without messing around with magnets and all that was just basically do what I've done. So, a bit of, uh, put a screw into the side of the wood, a bit of string going all the way down, a bit of fishing line, so it's pretty much invisible. You can't really see it unless you really look for it. And then that's what holds the plant in place. At least that way, um, it's easy to get the, uh, the plants in and out. They will be actually like little eye screws, so there'll be a little, little eye on the end. And then when I've actually got the plant things made up properly, I'll have little hooks on them so I can just take them out if I need to, so it's not like a, a permanent fixture. Um, but yeah, this end screw here, the third one along, this is where I'm gonna be putting the plant. And yeah, I'm hoping it should rest against the side and, and keep the plant upright. I'm probably gonna have to do something with this just to stop this from going into the water, but um, I've got a feeling the roots might start rooting from this this plant here. You can see the little nodules on the side. Um, I do think the, that might start rooting if it goes in the water, so it's just a, a bit of a bonus, really. So, try and get this in place. I'm gonna submerge it to begin with, just to make sure I've got all the water in there, make sure it's nice and heavy. And then it'll be a case of just tying it off at the right depth. And there we go, it's all done. So, yeah, I did change my idea a little bit. Um, as you'll see, I did make that small hole in the front of the plant pot, as you can see it's in the screen. So I did run a, a third piece of uh, fishing line just up from that, just because the weight of this plant 
as it sort of looms out, it was sort of tipping this whole thing, this whole thing forward. So I put that extra bit on there just to sort of keep the plant pot level and you can see that water's right at the level of where I put that, that uh, filter floss. And the filter floss in there itself is gonna draw up that moisture. So the stems aren't gonna be wet wet, um, they're gonna be damp, but it just makes sure that all the roots are gonna be nice and wet. So you can see down the bottom below as well, as so you can see just here, we do have some roots poking down if the camera wants to focus you can see the roots poking down there and in the middle of the pot there's some roots poking down there so hopefully all the roots are going to make their way through the bottom um, and actually get into that water and i've also sort of added a little bit of support for this branch just added a little a little nail up there with some some thicker like garden cores just to hold it up i don't want to use the fishing line just in case the fishing line cut into it a bit um, especially when it starts to get a little bit longer so i've just used that thicker core just to support that up and that's just to make sure that the whole plant basically is out of the water if the leaves do dip in a little bit i'm not too worried but i can always string them up if needed but yeah it's not permanent it's literally just to see how the plant reacts just to see if it does start growing a little bit more um, i have been watering this plant with the water from the pond um, so it has been getting some nutrients from the pond but um, other than that I think yes yeah, uh, Bob a job well done that's sort of facing towards the light so it should get some of the light if I turn the main lights off out here um, you can see they do have some some light it does glare off the water so whether that would be enough for it to grow or not I'm not sure um, but as I said I don't think these plants need a great deal of light so um, yeah I think they'll be I think they'll be fine how good do these plants in here look? Um, yeah, so as you can see, yeah, this one's munched up. This one's a bit munched up, but I'm hoping they will come back. But this whole wall, there's probably gonna be about four different, four of these plants on here. There's probably gonna be about six to eight plants along there. Then again, another four here. I just think that'll really set off the backdrop. It will hide these lines here. You can see where I've had to fold the liner over and stuff. So yeah, once they start growing out, they get quite big. I think they should, uh, they should make the pond look really full then. So yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed that. Um, I'll let you know how it works. I do need to do a test on this at some point of the weekend. So I will be checking the water levels um, and all the parameters and things that make sure the ammonia, nitrates, nitrates and all that are nice and level, uh, nice and low. And I, again, whether it makes difference not putting that small plant in, probably not. Um, this plant probably will need to get sort of 10 times the size of this before it even starts to impact on the pond. Um, you think about how much water this uses to actually grow, I don't know how much it actually absorbs at a time but um, from when I was watering it I didn't have to put that much water in, um, it didn't tend to like guzzle the water as much as what I thought so uh, now I've got it out of the pot, uh, the pot and I know it is three small plants um, that sort of shows me why it wasn't using as much water so as it does grow as the roots get bigger um, as it starts spreading things like that um, hopefully I will see uh, some increase in efficiency with the pond the filtration i've got is pretty much bulletproof i've got a ton of ceramic media in there i'm talking like probably a good i want to say a good four 450 quids worth of ceramic media i've got out there um, i bought a job load because this was going to be salt remember if you've watched this um little fish jump if you've watched this from the beginning you know this was originally going to be a salt water pond um and yeah i completely changed my mind as i do and yeah it's now going to be fresh water full of nice aggressive big monster fish basically um so yeah i bought a load of ceramic media just for the filtration i've still got loads left over that i'm going to sort of spread around my tank that i've got upstairs my salt water tank and actually chuck a load of it in the koi pond that's left over so yeah the filtration on this is absolutely bulletproof um this pond i think i've worked it out to be about 1500 liters um and the, the actual filtration side of it is about 450 litres just on the filtration itself. So it's about 2,000 litre in total. Um, you think a quarter of that is the filtration. So hopefully that should do a, a proper job and um, should keep this water nice and clean, nice and healthy. Um, but yeah, I will keep you updated. I am going to do an update on the actual pond itself, um, the stocking I've got in here and things like that. Uh, and once the garage is done, and I've got all the filtration and everything proper. I need to get insulated, I will document that. But I need to insulate all that as well, so I'll do a big video on the filtration as well if you're interested. So, yeah, that's all I've got for you pretty much. Um, hope you've enjoyed, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.